The concept of knowledge is a tricky thing. Epistemology, the branch of philosophy that studies knowledge, gives us the standard definition of knowledge, which is true justified belief. We can't call something knowledge if it isn't true in some way, if we can't justify it and if we can't believe it. Although there are difficulties with each of these aspects and I encourage you to think about and read up on those difficulties, I'd like to take the philosophical definition as a given. And what I want to focus on in this video is another take on the meaning, or rather meanings, of knowledge that have an impact in the classroom. In another video, I discussed the continuum from data through information to knowledge. Briefly, knowledge was said to be when a human internalizes information from outside, and this information in turn is a translation or an, an interpretation of some perception of the world. In this view, knowledge is simply things humans know. You can readily see that things that qualify as knowledge in a philosophical sense might not be the same as what I will call psychological knowledge. For example, a six-year-old child may believe that his mother is the best mummy in the world. No amount of persuasion will alter his belief. He knows that his mummy is the best. In the philosophical view, this is not knowledge, but in the psychological view, it certainly is. Much of what we know will fail the philosophical test of knowledge. Our cognitive biases get in the way and often we jump to conclusions, which means, by the way, that we reach our conclusions without going through the steps of collecting enough adequate information, assessing each piece of information for its actual relevance to the issue in hand, subjecting the issue and information to technical and values-based evaluations before coming to our conclusion. This process I've just outlined is highly complex and it's unlikely that undergraduate students will ever need to conduct a full analysis of any argument, unlike doctoral students who need to fully comprehend the ontological, epistemological and methodological nature of any piece of information they use in their research. Compare this to the much simpler process of having a thought and quickly believing that it's right. If a student is unable to distinguish between hypothetical possibilities and philosophical knowledge, they end up believing that their thoughts are knowledge. The issue of justification seems to be the sticking point for many students. Here, we can dispense with the issues of truth and belief. In the beginning of their college career, students are faced with the tasks of comprehending a lot of information and forming new knowledge structures. Asking or expecting students to judge the veracity of new information at this early stage may be a step too much, but as students begin to demonstrate their mastery of a subject, it becomes time to introduce issues of justification. You will know that teaching tends to be transmissionist, where the teacher gives information to students in lectures or books. Rarely are the base elements of the information subject to philosophical questioning. They are treated as being unquestionable. We end up in a culture that fails to question, fails to doubt, fails to see how information passes the philosophical knowledge test. Students end up believing that what they know is actual knowledge. In other words, the gap between psychological knowledge and philosophical knowledge is not seen. Yet this gap best summarises a crucial purpose of education, the development of people who can transform their naive psychological knowledge 
into robust and sophisticated philosophical knowledge. It's no coincidence that the highest academic degree is called the Doctor of Philosophy in all subjects. We can't expect undergraduates to perform at that level, but teachers need to provide tuition that demonstrates philosophical knowledge as philosophical knowledge in order to show students the path that they can take to narrow the gap between the forms of their knowledge.